All right, let's go. Settler and his wife. What a waste. You mean a settler and a squaw, Captain? A woman's Indian. Patchy, sir. Emily, get my bag from the wagon. Sergeant, get a blanket. Yes, sir. Death Valley Day. Howdy, folks. I'm the old ranger. In the year 1880, the Apache Indians threatened a final great uprising against the frontier settlers. Now, throughout the Arizona Territory, there was raiding, burning, and killing. But with so few soldiers available, the frontier forces had to consider what was best for the majority of the settlers they were protecting, rather than the individuals. But there was one man, an army doctor, who believed strongly in the rights of the individual, especially in the rights of one person, a very little person named Susie. Don't worry now, dear. Everything's going to be all right. Little Charlie. There, dear. dear. Doctor's trying to help you. You try to think about something else. Tell me your name. Susie. My name is Susie. What is a very pretty name? Mommy. Mommy. Oh, your mommy'd be here, dear, if she could. You try to pretend I'm your mommy, and the doctor's your daddy, and he's helping you. Mommy. Oh. She's unconscious. Best thing for her right now. We're still almost 100 miles from Fort Apache, aren't we? Oh, I'd say about 130 miles, Captain. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's too long a trip. She'd never survive. Well, you planning on taking her with us? You don't think I'm going to leave her here, do you? Looks like our transfer to Fort Apache will be delayed a few days, Emily. We'll have to take her back to Lowell. Well, Captain, we've been together quite a spell. Take my advice. Do what you can for the kid, but leave her here. <laughs> what? Leave her here? I don't know why they wanted to wipe out this family, but I'll bet it's because that Indian woman married a white. Now, this smells to me like a tribal blood feud. What's that got to do with taking care of the child? Because she's a part of it. She's a half-breed. Her mother was an Indian, her father a white. This is Indian business, and we best keep out of it. I wouldn't leave anybody in her condition, bro. Not even you. We'll take her back to Lowell. She'll be all right. The fever broke about an hour ago. Oh, wonderful. Now we have to get you some rest. You haven't had a wink of sleep since we brought her in here. Come on. She's a pretty little thing, isn't she? Oh. So frail. Helpless. Colonel Laycock wants to see you, sir. Oh, well, good morning, Sergeant. Good morning, sir. Ma'am? You have any idea what it's about? Well, yes, sir. It's no secret. It's about the little girl. Oh, what have they found out about her, Sergeant? Oh, quite a lot, ma'am. Ever hear of the name Nawnee? You mean the Apache chief? 
chief of the Coyotira. The bloodthirstiest Apaches of them all. You see, uh, Nani's daughter married a white man named Fisher. They're the ones we found burned to death. Susie is Nani's granddaughter? Yes, ma'am. You mean that Nani actually ordered the death of his daughter? Why not? He hates whites. He disowned his daughter for marrying a white, deserting her tribe. Oh, and there's something else, Captain. About an hour after we left, the Scot spotted Nani at the Fisher Ruins. He knows you have his granddaughter. And he has every brave of the tribe between here and Fort Apache looking for her. I guess he wants to finish the job. Oh, Susie. What's the matter, Snack? Is it your burn, dear? Does it hurt? Well, then what is it, dear? The death. What's the matter, Susie? Did you hear us talking? <laughs> Do you know Nani? I'm afraid of him. There's nothing to be afraid of. I want to stay with you. You don't have to go with him, Susie. You can stay with us as long as you want to. I promise. <laughs> Where's the colonel? You wanted to see me, colonel? Oh, yes, doctor. How's that child? Well, she's doing fine. Good. Will she be able to travel soon? Yes, I think so. I've got to send her back to Nani. Send her back. He's her grandfather, also the chief and no fool. I'm sure he knows the girls here. I can't risk an uprising. I have a hundred lives to protect. Of course, you know Nani killed Susie's parents. Probably, but we have no proof. Chances are he's going to kill her, too. Captain, I'm as worried about this child as you are. But as Nani is her grandfather, he has a perfect right to demand the child. And unless we can prove his intention, I have no choice but to give her back to him. Her father was white. Fisher knew the chief opposed the wedding. He took his chances. Besides, Nani is her only living relative. Colonel, I can't let you do it. You think I'm some cold-blooded monster? You think I want to do this? Nani is itching for war. And so is every Apache in the territory. I can't risk my men and the lives of the white settlers for one little half-breed Indian girl. I'd give my right arm to save her, but I have no choice. I do. I can take Susie to Fort Apache. I can't give you an escort for two weeks. It seems useless to risk your life. May I have your permission, Colonel? Doctor, I've admired you ever since you came here. You've worked hard, sometimes night and day. We need men like you in the wilderness. We need you badly. That little girl needs me, too. Then why in the name of heaven do you risk your life? I don't know exactly. I guess it's just in my nature to get involved with the people the way I do. The little girl, because she's alone, she's hurt, she's terrified, and because I promised not to leave her. Now, may I have your permission, sir? All right. Thank you. And doctor, don't make me hate myself for the rest of my life. You get through safely. Yes. 
How's Susie? She's so restless. It's not exactly smooth as ride. Yeah, I know it, but the more distance we put between ourselves and Fort Lowell before dark, the better chance we'll have of getting through. Oh, we'll get through, Walter. Woodham. Get in the back. Walter, you're exhausted. You've been driving all night. Now, you have to get some rest. Oh, we've got to keep moving. Well, you can't go on like this. You don't know about the horses well. Oh, there's no place to stop in this open country, Emily. Well, what about the Collier place? They're not far from here. No, I'm afraid just stopping there is going to put them into jeopardy, too. Oh, Walter, you have to get some rest. They'll understand. You delivered their baby for them. They'll want to help you. Well, they haven't seen any in the last half hour, and they... No, we're headed for Fort Apache. I probably figure we'll stick to the road. Collier's are miles off the road. Maybe, maybe it'd be all right. Yes. Doctor. Oh, hello, Collier. I thought maybe you didn't hear me. I heard you, Doc. What do you want? I'm on our way to Fort Apache. And yeah, I, I know like... all about it. I was at Fort Lowell when you brought that kid in. You're traveling with the Indian's granddaughter, ain't that right? Yes. Would you like to hide the wagon and rest for a few hours? And that Indian's looking for that little girl, you know. I've seen a couple of braves this morning move around top of those hills. They was looking for her and you. Yes, yes, I know. Doc, I, I know I owe you more than a slam door, but I got my wife and baby to think of. I can't help you, Doc. I, I just can't help you. Now, now you better move along, Doc. Deep, the horses can pull us out. Yeah, I, I suppose they can. Oh, Wally, well, you've got to get some rest. You've been driving for 24 hours. Oh, now. Susie. Oh, she found an old nursery book of mine. She's pretending to read it. Oh, poor little thing. 
I really wanted to keep my promise to her. You will, Walter. You know, Emily, all my life I've wanted to help people, especially those who were alone, couldn't help themselves. That's why I became a doctor, I guess. But I don't know. Out here in this wilderness, maybe Laycock was right. Maybe you, you just can't worry about the individuals, whether they need help or not. The law of survival is mighty strong. But that little Susie, there's something about her that I, I felt. Like she was our own daughter. Yeah. And like maybe we were the only ones she could depend on. Oh, Walter, well, look at you. You have to get some sleep. Even just a little bit will help. All right. Maybe just an hour or so. I'll watch out for us. Oh, God. <laughs> Where's Susie? She's in the wagon asleep. Oh. Oh. How long have I been asleep? Not very long, just a few hours. Oh. Well, anyway, I feel better. You look better. Emily. Mm. I'm sorry I got you in all this. Didn't, Walter. We insisted on coming, remember? Anyway, this way, no matter what happens, we're together. The wagon which left the fort moves again on the road to Fort Apache, Chief Nani. This wagon carry child of Nani, daughter? It is the only one that has left since the new moon. Which way go? Dave! Dave. Oh, <laughs> 
Wait. This child, my blood. You took child. She, granddaughter of Chief Nani. Sworn blood enemy of all white men. You hurt child to hurt Nani. Took her as hostage. Hostage? My husband took that child when you left her there to die. Quiet, woman. Killed her mother. You, you killed your own daughter. You just... This true love for daughter turned to venom of snake when she married white man called Fisher. So gods kill her. The gods have nothing to do with it. Your braves killed her parents. Susie saw them. Braves swear to God of son was mistake, not Noah's daughter. Nani believe. Braves good. Speak with pure tongue. Why you cry? White man hurt you? Kill them. Don't kill him. Please don't kill him. Not kill? Why? They're my friends. Friends? White man? Yes. Then why you take away child from Nani? Because we thought you were going to kill her. Not kill child of Nani, daughter. Nani take back from white man to save her. Well, then we were both trying to protect her. You see, Nani, we have a lot to learn about each other. Maybe. Maybe. Sue, see? Yes, Susie. Susie, you want go with white man? Yes. She not Kayatero, she white. Have dress and way of white. You a soldier? A doctor, Walter Reed. Doctor, medicine man. Yes. Good. You take her. Go, child. Go in peace. God be with you. Susie, you saved our lives. We're going home now, Susie. Home. Walter and Emily adopted Susie, and she stayed with them until she reached womanhood. Then she returned to her mother's people as a teacher. As for Walter, he was the same man who later in his great love for humanity conquered yellow fever, which at that time was one of the greatest killer scourges of man. In his honor is named the renowned Walter Reed Hospital in Washington, D.C.